go to the next slide. Uh, so we were asked by the decadal the, that uh, we should develop a, a strategic lunar program that includes human exploration, and we are attempting to do that. Next slide. Uh, when you say uh, we're developing an integrated lunar science strategy, as it turns out, that means different things to different people <laughs> as we are learning. So uh, I want to state clearly what that means to me. Right. To me, an integrated lunar science strategy is really it's an opportunity for us to think strategically about what are the tools available to us and how do they map to the high priority science that we want to accomplish at the moon. Uh, and it's an opportunity to build a plan within our budget constraints that defines a path forward that's flexible enough to react to our changing landscape as our capabilities grow and our priorities evolve. Uh, what is it not? It is not a document that we carved in stone that will come down from the proverbial mountaintop and be handed to the community. I keep hearing that out there. I promise that is not what we are doing. Next slide. Uh, so I'm going to present here today uh, our sort of the path that we are taking and developing that strategy, um, looking to meet sort of the biggest challenges from lunar science as the community has de defined uh, how long is this going to take? It's not fast. Uh, we are already starting several mission studies and, and science definition teams. We have more to go. We're working uh, with League on some special action teams and, and continuing workshops and other things. Uh, so it's going to take a while. Um, over the next couple of years, we're going we're gonna to get in a lot of data. It's going to allow us to make informed decisions about our strategic direction. Uh, at the same time, we realize that the community wants to understand what we're doing and what we're thinking. And so uh, our plan at the at this point is to sort of put out uh, a sort of snapshot of where we are. We've been working on this for about a year now. Uh, this fall, uh, we plan to put out a sort of snapshot report um, for community comment uh, to allow you guys some insight into where we're at and where we're headed. Uh, and then theor theoretically, that will be updated at some Pre un, un, not as of yet determined intervals uh, as we move forward uh, to allow for that flexibility that I was talking about. Uh, who is developing it? We are. We have put together a joint team between PSD and SEO, uh, but of course uh, we are also looking for community participation through studies, through SDTs, workshops, town halls, league special action teams, activities like the LSSWs. Uh, next slides. Uh, so, uh, Jake, I think several people now have shown this this Venn diagram today. I, I know I know Jake showed it, but I think there have been a number of other folks who showed it as well uh, on our pillars of exploration. I pointed I pointed out again to note that although science is one of our priorities at the moment, it is not our only priority, and so we have to understand that as we are uh, putting our uh, our strategic plans together that that we are not the only uh, player in this game. Uh, we also, as soon as you start talking about humans, you, you know, safety and transport of, of our astronauts are obviously uh, our highest priority. Uh, we have uh, directives from, from the White House. We have been told that we are to land at the Lunar South Pole. Uh, we are also uh, working to promote a lunar economy. Um, so even CLIPS, right, is not, it's strictly about science. It is, it is we have other objectives there as well. Uh, and we are preparing for human exploration to Mars and beyond, uh, all of which is to say that although lunar science is clearly a, a major driver here, it is not the only thing that we have to take into account. Next slide. Uh, but we have no shortage of input from the community over the last you know, 50 years. We've had a lot of time to think about what we want to do at the moon. Uh, and we have these, you know, particularly these, these five sort of foundational documents that we are looking to uh, to understand what our, our priorities are. Next slide. Uh, and if you sort of look through those things, right, not everything that we want to do uh, requires a strategy, right? There, there's, there's lunar science that we can do simply with the data we already have on hand and through our RNA programs. Uh, there's, there's science we can do through, through our CLIPS program, through discovery, through, through many other venues. Uh, but there are a few things that sort of fall out of that that, that really require a strategy or they're just not going to happen. And so uh, we sort of laid this out as, you know, there are these three missions uh, South Pole Lake and Sample Return, a Lunar Geophysical Network, and Cryogenic Volatile Sample Return that absolutely require a strategy uh, or they're not going to happen. Uh, and in addition to that, there's a couple of things, lunar chronology and lunar formation evolution, that necessarily require a sort of buildup of knowledge and global access. You can't, you can't solve these problems in a single mission. Uh, and so we need to think through a strategy for those as well. Next slide. 
Uh, so if you think through each one of these things, there are multiple options uh, for achieving them, right? So, so for example, South Lake and Basin Sample Return is on our new Frontiers list. Uh, the Takeda also suggested Endurance A or, or you know, some other rover design uh, to accomplish that. You could think about human sorties. We could send humans uh, to one, maybe more than one place within the in the basin. Uh, you could think about doing this through CLIPS. Right now, we don't have that level of capability through CLIPS, but we could imagine um, working to evolve towards it, or some combination of the above. Uh, so, how do we how do we find the path to that decision? Uh, right now, we have a study happening uh, with JPL uh, to to sort of better define the endurance mission as it was laid out in the decadal. Um, that was pretty high level, so we're digging sort of to the next level deeper. Um, I know that there is uh, being science being considered with that as well. I believe there's a workshop in August. I think it's August uh, to try to try to get some community input on the science that we want to accomplish through endurance. So I encourage you uh, to participate in that if you are interested. Uh, beyond that, and that's a sort of short term study that we've asked JPL to do, but we are planning to do a community science definition team to get more. Uh, in-depth community input on an, an endurance mission. We're also looking to the National Academies. Uh, you'll see this come up several times in this, but we are planning to ask them to do a study on non-polar sorties for human exploration, the places that we would like to go other than the South Pole uh, in order to make progress on some of these uh, objectives that we have. Uh, and you could think about, uh, you know, how are, how could we get CLIPS to a point where it would be possible to do South Lake and Basin uh, with CLIPS, where, where, as I said, we're not quite there yet, but if that is a strategy we would like to go down, we can think about what that path looks like. Next slide. Uh, lunar Geophysical Network, there's also several ways uh, to achieve that. That is, again, that is on the New Frontiers list. You could also certainly think about multiple CLIPS deliveries, either of a, of a long duration rover or of a self-contained payload that would be delivered uh, by a CLIPS lander. Uh, you could think about po uh, polar and non-polar human sorties. Again, some combination of the above. The nice thing about a network is you can just keep adding to it and making it uh, bigger and more robust. Uh, here again, path to a decision. We're looking at that non-polar sortie um, National Academy study, thinking about doing a payload design study to understand what a, what a sort of self-contained integrated payload would look like. We're assessing our capabilities of our CLIPS companies uh, to see what they could manage. Next slide. Uh, cryogenic volatile sample return. Um, this is uh, this is still a, a big challenge. I don't want to downplay it, but architecturally, it's the simplest because we do have a viable path to achieve it through Artemis. But we should not underestimate the difficulty of ev every step along the way of collecting, of transporting, of curating, and analyzing cryogenic samples. Those are all really hard things, and we are starting to slowly look work through them and understand uh, what we have to do in order to get to make those things possible. Right now, our path forward on that uh, through Artemis is is uh, is sort of a, a multi-phase plan where we start out Artemis 3, Artemis 4. Uh, we expect to have sealed containers, but we don't expect to condition them uh, in any way. There won't be any freezer available. Uh, eventually, by, by sort of Artemis 5-ish, we are looking at a minus 85 freezer uh, getting colder um, and then down the road um, to a, to a cryo freezer as a, as a further step. We've got a lot of studies underway uh, to try to understand what those things uh, look like um, and, and, and how difficult they're going to be to achieve. Um, and as Amy mentioned, we are working on, on getting together a League XMEG a special action team to, to understand the science that we want to accomplish. Uh, and, and we have a lot of questions about, about what the community uh, wants to focus on. So next slide. Uh, lunar chronology. Uh, there's, of course, a couple of ways to 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 work on that. You could you can do things in situ, so we can work on developing in situ tools, uh, or you can do things through sample returns. So we've got uh, again, we, Clips is is an option right now. They have they don't have that capability, but but we could drive towards that capability. Uh, also, Artemis uh, through both polar and nonpolar uh, sorties, and and again, some combination of the above. Here again, we can just keep building on on our knowledge as as it grows. Uh, so we are, you know, thinking about ways to develop in situ dating tools. We are working, talking about whether we want to drive towards sample return for CLIPS or not. Uh, and we've got this National Academy study on nonpolar sorties. Next slide. 
Okay, lunar formation and evolution. Um, the good news is that by making progress on, all, on our other goals, we really make a lot of progress on this one. Uh, through SPA sample return, through the LGN, uh, many of the same locations we want to go to uh, for lunar chronology. And so our path to this is really making progress on those other things. Next slide. I do see you, Amanda. I know. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, you can also cut this strategy uh, in a different direction so we can talk about the, what, what are the components of the strategy. Next slide. Uh, the orbital strategy, I'm not going to talk about because Noah also al already really talked about it. Next slide. Uh, our CLIPS strategy, I'm clear here that, that um, uh, CLIPS, uh, although they're very eager for input on where to put their future development efforts, neither we nor they can really go for uh, can really afford to go down all the paths simultaneously that we would like to go. There are lots of things we would like CLIPS to be capable of doing it. But we can't do it all at once, and so we really need to put some strategic thought into what directions we want to do in the short term and what things need to wait for a longer term. Uh, next slide. Sam, there you go. Uh, Artemis strategy, uh, we've talked a little bit about this in here. We're working on, on building capabilities. Starting out, Artemis 3 is going to be have some limited capabilities, but we're going to grow that um, with freezers, with mobilities, with pressurized rovers. We're building our power and comms infrastructure, enhanced sample return capabilities. All of those things are going to come along, along the way eventually. Uh, meanwhile, we're building our instrument capabilities through, through targeted calls like Dolly and Picasso and Matisse, Prism. Uh, and we're really appreciative of the input that we've gotten over the years through these um, LSSW series. Um, I do want to say that we are, again, thinking about not only that National Academy study on nonpolar sorties for human exploration, but it came up earlier. Uh, we are also thinking, working towards a, a National Academy study a little bit further down the road uh, on what the sustained human presence on what the, the base camp sort of phase of our lunar exploration should look like for science. Uh, and we are, as we said, doing doing a, a, a going to build a science definition team for for endurance. Next slide, which is my last one, I promise. <laughs> uh, so in our RNA strategy, uh, we've put a lot of thought into this. We are not. We are uh, really trying to to build our our community and make sure that we are really um, pushing up the places where our community uh, needs to grow, particularly things like. Um, uh, sample science and field geology communities and our instrument pipelines. And so we put a lot of uh, activities, uh, money into special calls that are really building up those communities. But we do plan to enhance our, our lunar activities in other in our existing calls as well. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to run out of voice, so I'm going to have to stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, with, with, we'll be supplementing uh, with money from SEO to enhance the selections. We're in a lot of our calls to make sure that the lunar community uh, has what it needs to move forward. And I think I'm just going to end there because I know I'm way over time. Sorry. 